Yeah, so I'm going to talk like Tomek actually about something that I don't do uh, at work, but this is a hobby project, in fact. Um, so to give, yeah, so clearly I'm building a code editor, so that, that's kind of an insane idea because there's so many already. So let me give a little bit of context of why the hell you would do something like that. Um, so two jobs back, actually, I used to work at a company called Cloud9 IDE. How many people have heard of that? Okay, that's, that's a fair number, that's good. Uh, so what we build basically is like a code editor in the cloud, right? So you, instead of downloading something and installing it and editing files on your local drive, you go to the website, you create a project there and you do everything in your web browser. And this was more or less my first job uh, after, after university. And what I focused on was building language intelligence tools. So code completion, symbol indexing, uh, refactoring, this kind of, kind of stuff. So for a year and a half, right. Yeah, this is kind of a shame of the PDF version. Uh, uh, after a year and a half of working on your own editor every day as your job, and then leaving that job and having to use somebody else coded editor is not easy, actually. <laughs> because I, I, I couldn't use Cloud9 anymore for various technical reasons. So what do you do, right? So what do you use? You, know, you use Vim, you use Emacs, you use Sublime, like probably most people do. But they all share one thing in common, which is that like, I didn't create them. And that's not cool. So that's one reason why I would uh, write my own editor. The other one is that I have some leftover ideas from Cloud9, like stuff I wanted to do, like wanted to experiment with and never had the time for. Uh, I wanted to play with extensibility. If you write a code editor, how do you allow users to write their own extensions, their own new functionality? How do you deal with the offline web application case? Because Cloud9 was an online thing. So if you didn't have an internet connection, it more or less breaks, right? Um, also, because in the, the job that I had then, I did a lot of editing in virtual machines or in virtual machines either on my laptop or on Amazon or something. I constantly ended up like SSHing into a machine, starting VI with some random settings that I didn't like and like editing stuff. And that really wasn't great for me. So I wanted to have a, like a nice way that I can edit code on local virtual machines, remote virtual machines and these kinds of things. And I had some experimental UX ideas that I wanted to try out. So two years ago, um, I started my own little project on GitHub. This is the first commit. Uh, the initial target audience, after long thinking about like how to do that, I decided it would be just me. So that's easy, because I know exactly what I want. Um, so the technology I decided on using, HTML, JavaScript, CSS, because that's what I know. Uh, I reused a big chunk of Cloud9, which is the code editor component, so the actual part where you type the code. And at the time, this, this, again, two years ago, there, this thing came around called Chrome Apps. Have you ever heard of Chrome Apps? So this is the idea there, uh, that inside of Chrome, you can build applications that have a little bit more uh, abilities than just regular web applications. For instance, you can load file, file, you get access to the local disk, you can do Bluetooth, you can do random networking, and also the application runs completely locally on your machine, you don't even need an internet connection once it's installed. So that seemed interesting and like a good fit for me, so that's what I tried to, uh, that's what I uh, decided on using. So I called this editor, like almost after this one audience member, like the one user that it would ever have, Zed, um, so initially it was a Chrome app, as I mentioned. Eventually, uh, I also v uh, created a separate version uh, using Node WebKit, which is basically allows you to run the application without having Chrome installed. <coughs> so there's two editions. Um, yeah, so quickly, two years later, so this is now, right? Um, I'm happy to report that it turned out is not hardly legible, but there's more people that are interested in that as the editor than me. I, in the Chrome Web Store, and now have over 41,000 users. Um, very good ratings, people really seem to like this, so that makes me really happy. Um, I'm also not the only one that contributes anymore. There's 38 contributors, we have over 1,000 commits, 40 releases. It's actually a pretty active uh, little project, so that's cool. So for the rest of my time here, uh, I would like to focus on two things. 
first is uh, some of the features of the editor, because it's in some ways it's like any, any other editor, in other ways it's a little bit different. And then I would focus on how, how do you configure this thing, how do you extend it, how do you build new features into it. Right, so let's start with the usual suspect. So this is what uh, on a Mac uh, Z looks like. It's not like amazingly um, surprising probably. There's a code editor components, there's split view editing, there's very little Chrome, we don't, I don't have tab bars, I don't have uh, trees and stuff. Uh, there's basic code completion, syntax highlighting, uh, yeah, what you would expect. Uh, you have theme, theming support, so if you don't like dark, you can go light. Uh, you switch between files in most cases using this go-to UI, which is very similar to what you have in TextMate and Sublime, but it also navigates to symbols, not just files. There's a tree, if you want one, uh, you can get a file tree. I don't use it much, actually. And there's a, like, the, similar to Emacs and Sublime, like every key you press, uh, effectively you're running a command. And you can also just get a list of those commands, like the command pane, similar to Sublime. And you can configure all the key bindings as you want them. There's built-in preview support, for instance, for uh, Markdown and some other languages. Right, so that, that, that's the stuff that I think every editor probably has, more or less. Um, so this is where it gets a little bit different in subtle ways. Uh, Autosave is always on in Z. You don't, like, Command S does nothing, right? Uh, many editors have this ability. In Z, it's default. You cannot switch it off. Deal with it. For some people, this is kind of uh, tricky because they say, well, I have this way that I sometimes open a file, make some random changes, and then like close the document to just revert. We have version control systems for this kind of thing. And undo, Z doesn't do it. This makes my, my life easier as, <laughs> as the guy implementing it, but also in terms of like, when I close the window, should it save those changes or not? Should I ask, like, should these files be uh, saved or not? If I switch away from a file, like, should it be saved or not? It, it, it simplifies a lot of things um, in there. Uh, this, the last one is, the uh, second one is that there's no tabs at all. Uh, I don't, like, based on my editor usage and browser usage, like, it's just so difficult to deal with it. Like, whenever I use a browser, I end up in this situation, right? Oh. A bazillion tabs that, like, you cannot no longer tell uh, what they're for, so I just usually just close the whole window and, like, open a new one, and then we'll see when I have to do it again, right? So, in Z, there's no tabs. Uh, and instead, I made the, for this purpose, I used the, the, this little go-to UI. And actually, the way it's sorted is based on your last usage. So if you want to switch between recently edited files, they're actually listed at the top. Um, and this works really well for me because you can type a little bit and then it starts to filter the list. So actually, I don't miss them at all. And it gives me uh, more room uh, in the, in this, on the screen as well. Another thing is that the way to create a file is actually to type a file name in this GoToUI that doesn't exist. So you can type a random file name, random directory, you hit enter, and it actually creates the file. So there's no separate like file new, blah, blah, blah. Just use the same UI, the GoToUI, um, to navigate to a file that doesn't exist. You hit enter, and, you, and the file is created. Right, so I mentioned editing remote files before, so this is one of the ways you can do that in Z. There's a little explanation inside of the application. It's barely readable here, but what it comes down to is you log into some server over SSH. Uh, doesn't matter if it's local, doesn't matter if it's in a VPN, doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world. You copy and paste this little, oh, right, so that didn't work out, so yeah. Sadly, <laughs> the PDF version, you cannot see this, but you paste uh, a little curl command, basically curl this and this page into bash, and it installs and downloads a little tool called zrem, zremote. You run this command with a command line argument with a little code in there, and then what happens when you hit enter is that on your local machine, a window will pop up that allows you to edit those files on the server. So all you have to do is SSH into the machine, run two commands, and now on your local 
like laptop, an editor window pops up with all your regular settings and preferences and everything, like a nice way of editing. And you can edit files and it's automatically saved on the server. So it's kind of a nice feature, my opinion. Um, right, so in here it shows that it's actually saved. There's another thing because uh, since it's a Chrome app, I can also easily build a Chrome extension. So there's an edit in Z Chrome extension, which basically what it does, like every text area or every place on any, any web page, when you hover your mouse cursor over it, the, this little uh, Z icon appears. And if you click it, you can edit the text of that text area in Z which is slightly nicer, right? Like for instance, if you're editing uh, a GitHub issue, you can actually get markdown preview uh, right in there. So that's about the features in the UX. So let's move on to configuration and extension, extensibility. How am I doing on time? I think quite okay. Okay. So, right, so in Z, everything is a project, more or less. You, if you open a folder, a local folder, remote folder, Dropbox folder, GitHub repo, it's all a project. And configuration is just another project. There's also a manual project, actually. So configuration is just another project that you can open. And in the Chrome version, by default, it's stored in the Chrome Sync file system which basically automatically syncs with Google Drive, which means that if I would now take a random laptop here, log, install Z, log in with my Google account, I would get all my settings and configuration transferred to that laptop. So this works on Chromebooks or Windows or Linux or, or anything, everything. So that's kind of nice. Um, so when I started to think about configuration, because like, as I said, like, I am the target audience, so why do I need preferences at all? Um, even I need some sort of preferences, like font size and stuff. So I, I need some way to edit these kinds of basic things. So I decided on two things to start with, which is preferences, so font, font size, colors, these kinds of things, but also key bindings. That's stuff that you want to change quite often. Um, so I came up with this amazing JSON format. Um, yeah, it's super shocking. You. It's basically an object where you can specify, well, these are my preferences and these are my key bindings. So you map command names to key uh, bindings. Okay. But then I saw like, uh, that I wanted to add more stuff to it over time, so I added a little import system. So you can also say import, uh, imports and then some other file, and then like, basically what it will do, it will read that file, it will combine those objects, and that's basically also how I handle default values for all these kinds of preferences. Um, right, so as I said, it's just a project, uh, but yeah, effectively it's made basically one file. <laughs> In practice, there's a lot more because there's a lot of imports. But yeah, the user JSON file, if you edit a preference here, for instance, you increase the font size from 12 to 13, it will save automatically, like because autosave is always on, as I said and automatically the font sizes will increase immediately. So as you edit this file, like the, the, the preferences will be applied. Everything will be applied immediately. There's also other ways of, of changing those preferences. If you're not like, uh, I don't like JSON editing by hand, you can also use the, uh, certain commands for it. For instance, this one here to increase the font size. Uh, and I even hacked together some fairly poor looking UI for it. Uh, but effectively, it all comes down to the same thing, right? These are all tools that basically edit the JSON file uh, in the configuration project. Okay. So preferences, key bindings is nice, but how do I allow myself? And at that point, it was clear that other was, others were also interested in using this. How do I allow people to extend this editor? Um, well, I thought, okay. Well, what do they need to do? Well, you need to be for at least be able to uh, create your own commands, right? And maybe also your own file modes because there's support for various languages in there, but maybe you want to add your own. So how do I do that? Well, obviously I add some little uh, keys in, the, in, this, in this configuration format, and then we'll see. So since we're, uh, Z is all implemented in web technologies, like the obvious choice, in terms of language to implement the command, sad to say it in SDX, is JavaScript. 
Um, so what a command basically is, comes down to is a JavaScript function that takes some input from the context, like I don't know, what, what, what file am I looking at, what's my cursor position, or whatever you happen to need. You do stuff and then you call some Z APIs to, I don't know, do whatever you want basically. So the question is how do you implement that, right? So my first thought was YOLO, right? Just eval. Uh, just run, <laughs> take users uh, JavaScript and run it. Mm. Which sounds crazy, but it's not even that crazy because it's all running locally, right? We, we're not distributing this to other people. But there is a little uh, problem here in that, that Chrome apps actually don't support eval. They like, explicitly disable it. So in a Chrome app, you cannot run eval. So yeah, that's a problem because yeah, it would be very flexible because yeah, with eval you can do whatever you want. It doesn't work in Chrome, so it doesn't work in Z. <laughs> kind of a deal breaker. You have zero control over what the user can do, right? You can break everything. Um, and to load new code, you basically have to restart the whole thing every time, which is not ideal. So you don't get hotly re reloading of your uh, extension code. So not the best option, especially because of the second one. So real solution, um, number one. And I kind of like this one still. Uh, why don't we extend Z using Chrome extensions? So the idea is that some user could create a Chrome extension that somehow extends Z and publish it to the, web, the Chrome web store. It makes discovery really easy, like users can like easily install them, uh, remove them, update them automatically and so on. So that seemed cool and that's actually technically possible because there's a bunch of Chrome app specific APIs that allow you to communicate from applications to extensions and vice versa. So, I asked the Google guys for permission if this is, wouldn't be like inappropriate and they said it was okay. So this is generally how this would work, right? So you have the Z, Z application running on one side, you have the extension running on the other side and they have now established some sort of like socket-like connection, right? So you have the ability to send messages between the two. So what an extension would do is basically say like, hello, I'm extension A, I provide these commands, I provide these uh, modes and all these things. For instance, like I, have, I provide this like new uh, YOLO command. It's like, so whenever the user calls that command, just tell me and I'll do stuff and then I'll tell you what to do and so on. That's basically how it works and then until the extension is somehow killed or uninstalled or updated, in that case, it disconnects and then that app like unregisters all the stuff that that extension provided and we're back in a clean state. So what you get for free is hot reloading. Like if you make changes to your extension and you reload the extension, it will disconnect from Z, Z will re remove everything it knew about you. It will then restart, re-register and basically you can just like in your Z editor you can extend uh, you can write your extension, just reload the extension and immediately see what you what you did without having to re restart any anything. And actually that works really nice. So uh, yeah, so I, I briefly mentioned, yeah, so this is in Z how you define your own mode. So this is an example of the JavaScript mode. So it specifies the name, the highlighter. In this case, we're actually reusing highlighters from Ace. Uh, what extensions to use this mode for, .js, and specific commands specific to that language mode. So if I'm opening a JavaScript file, now I will have this tools colon index command available. And this is a command that will be implemented in the extension. So this is not part of, the, of Z itself. Okay, but then how do you run those commands? Well, either you can run them by hand using this command palette or some key binding, but you can also say, well, Actually, I want them to, to be triggered automatically using a handler. And there's a bunch of handlers. There's an index handler, which basically decides, like, you edited enough code, let's just re-index your document. There's a code complete handler. So you hit the tab key or control space to get a code completion result. Check for, like, inline highlighting of warnings, linting, this kind of stuff. Change is, like, changing the document. Config reload, clicking. So basically, like if I define a JavaScript mode and I want to redefine what clicking does, you can do that, right? Uh, and it will, uh, it will trigger a command. <laughs> I'll very quickly run through this. This is an example of what uh, like a uh, symbol indexer could look like. So as I said, effectively, 
So this is using a common JS style, I don't know, like who does not know JavaScript in this room? Not know JavaScript in this room. Everybody knows JavaScript in this room? I think there's a few people that don't know JavaScript, but okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so basically what we do, uh, keep pushing the wrong button. It's over here. Yes, yeah, on your screen it's different. You import basically a Z-specific API, the symbol uh, library. We have a super fancy regular expression thanks to the language, the natural language processing that we just talked about, which is always terrible looking, but uh, it works, believe me. Um, and basically this module exports one function. This one, it takes one argument, which is descriptively called info. Um, and it calls, contains all kinds of information, like the path of the file, but also the text of the file, and that's actually what we're interested in. But in the function, basically what we do is we just run this regular expression over the text. Whoop. Okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> we run this regular expression over the text. We collect a bunch of uh, JSON objects that describe all the symbols that we have, and then we call the Z update symbols API, which will update the symbol index, obviously. Okay. Right, so how does that run in practice? So Z says, hey, indexing needs to happen. Who can index here? Well, okay, this extension provides the uh, tools index command that will be run. So we basically sending code over to the extension to be indexed. The extension does the indexing, says, okay, I have now collected all the new symbols that I found. It's doing an RPC call back, basically saying, okay, Z, please update your symbol table with this new data. Z says, okay, I'm done. And then the extension says, okay, I'm also done. So, in this setup, uh, we lose full flexibility, right? Because the only interaction you can have with the Z editor is using those specifically predefined APIs, like update symbol. Um, but what you do get is that it actually works <laughs> in Chrome. Uh, you get a lot more control because like, it's actually pretty difficult now in a Z extension to break Z itself, like Z will keep running um, and I can very tightly control the kind of features that you can build, which is good and bad. You also get hot, hot reloading because you can reload the extension at the re-registers and that all works, and so that's really nice. But it's now, this version is very specific on Chrome, right, because we're using Chrome extensions and I said, there's two versions, there's the Chrome app versions and there's a standalone version. And sadly, that means that I couldn't really go with this longer term. So, solution number two. Actually, it's very similar, except that we're now not talking to extensions, we're just talking to a sandbox. And the sandbox in a Chrome app is just a web view. And in a web view, you can load on a random web page. And all the restrictions like eval uh, don't apply there. So basically you can do whatever you want. You can ditch it. It doesn't have access to you. So it's very safe, right? Uh, and in the, in the Node WebKit version, I'm using a web worker. So that's like a separate set. It's also very safe. Uh, so now the configuration project basically contains all the code of all the extension code. So all the modes are just JSON files. So here you see a bunch of modes, like C mode, JSON mode, CoffeeScript mode, JavaScript mode, Dart mode, airline mode. Those are all specified okay. So it, it triggers on this JavaScript, uh, on, oh, sorry, on this file extension, it's using this highlighter, it has these commands. If you want to do indexing, you call this JavaScript file and so on. And just using the import system. So for the rest, it basically works the same way, right? So it's all uh, the, the JavaScript basically works exactly the same way. We has, in this approach, we are still not fully flexible. That doesn't change. It does work in Chrome. It's still controlled. You still get hot reloading because you can easily just kill the web worker and start it fresh, right, without having to restart your editor. Um, but like, how do you get this extension code in your configuration project? Like, you're not going to copy and paste everything. So how do you handle that? And this was actually uh, tackled by uh, somebody else. He built the Z pack package manager. Uh, yeah, so this is one of the bigger external contributions. So this is how it works. In your configuration file, you can specify a list of packages uh, with basically URLs. And this is like nicer versions of the URL. So this is a GitHub URL. Basically says, 
in the Z app organization, in the follow complete repository, that's where the package is. That's where the, the files are. And then Z, whenever this file has changed, will check, will fetch all the files, copy them into your project, and, and import them. So, right, so this is one of those repo, uh, repos using uh, some nice code completion experiment that I did. So it basically expects a package.json file there, it expects a config.json file, and the rest is just like whatever you need. So JavaScript files with implement commands and so on. And this is all updated automatically by ZPM. It's downloaded automatically by ZPM. Um, this little super fancy built uh, UI on top of this to manage this, also built as a Z package actually. Uh, so you can install new packages, you can uninstall packages, you can update packages manually if you want. Um, yeah. uh, one final thing here that I think is kind of nice, that you can have local overrides of your configuration. So in your project you can have a zconfig.json file that overrides your global configuration. So let's say hypothetically that in your project you have some sort of coding standard. Um, and you have a Z package that enforces that coding standard, so like checks if your like your pep8 is run or uh, your all your specific JS hint uh, things. You put that in a Z package, and you specify that package in your Z config file that's part of your project. If everybody in your project, of course, is using Z, they clone the repo, they start Z, they open the project, all the packages are automatically downloaded and activated and everybody's using the same coding convention uh, linting and so on. Uh, so that works nicely. And also specific preferences like tab size for specific modes and so on. So, okay. So to give you some idea, so what can you do, right? In a Z package, what, what, what can you actually, what kind of stuff can you build? So this is more or less what's currently supported. So you can get access to the configuration. So you can say, well, give me the, this give me this particular preference, set this preference. You get some basic database access. You can, basically this is a wraparound index DB if your uh, package needs that. Obviously you can get access to files uh, in the project. So there's file system access. There's HTTP, you can do like Ajax style calls, HTTP post, puts, and so on. You can uh, render something custom in the preview window so you can build your own previewer. You can get access to sessions, so like the particular file, cursor positions, uh, ranges, and everything. You can get access to the symbol table, and there's some basic UI elements you can use. So in Z, actually, I think now there's by far more code running inside the sandbox than outside of it. I think like the, the, the core of Z is like 14,000 uh, lines of JavaScript, and there's maybe 20,000 that's effectively running in the sandbox. So there's actually quite a lot you can do here. So uh, the linting, so JS hint, integrated JS hint support. I have a PEP8 extension that highlights PEP8 violations in line. Code completion, code indexes, preview, white, white space trim, document stats, searching projects, ZPM, snippet manager, preference UI, all of that stuff is implemented as a package. It's running inside of the, the, the sandbox. So it's, it turns out to be pretty powerful. You can do quite a bit with it. And that's more or less what I wanted to say um, in terms of schedule. Yeah, we have 10 more minutes until the coffee break. So if you, does anybody have any questions? And people wondered if I could get through 71 slides in 40 minutes. Yeah? 30 minutes, no problem. <laughs> any questions? Uh, it's more about uh, open sourcing your uh, application. Uh, do you uh, control everything uh, happens then, or you are just allow people do whatever they want? Uh, I control in the sense that not everybody has commit access to the main repo, but of course, like you can fork it, and people do. Uh, there's one other guy that has commit access, but for the rest, I just take review pull requests and merge it.
Okay, so you but are... It's, it's MIT license, so you, like anybody can do whatever they want. Basically. Yeah, but uh, do you uh, get many pull requests and you're just reviewing them and uh, just mm -hmm. pulling to, to your repository or how, how it works? Generally, that's how it works, yeah. yeah just review pull requests. Okay. I have a question uh, about uh, code competition mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I'm a J JavaScript developer. I use uh, WebStorm, and mm -hmm. I think that there is a great code competition. Mm -hmm. uh, I I used uh, Sublime um, uh, before, mm -hmm. and uh, it was not so good. So. Uh, uh, I heard that that you uh, that you uh, don't uh, don't uh, don't don't like uh, Sublime also. So, uh, what is your? I didn't create it, so yeah, that's uh, that's a big. My mind. question is about uh, how how the, how does uh, this code com code competition works? Okay, so. So Z itself doesn't implement code completion at all, right? It just provides a framework to implement your own code completions, completers. Uh, so there's a bunch of them. Uh, there are, so what happens? So you hit tab effectively and it says, okay, please code complete and whatever, whoever is listening to that, let's say, will then provide results. So there's one that just does word completion. So it just scans the documents and like that's the most basic one. The symbol completion, so we do symbol indexing for many tables, uh, languages. There is, and this is the one, the follow complete one that you that I showed in the, on the GitHub. Yeah, but... I, it but takes a little bit more time to explain how that works. I, uh, there's no, currently, I'm, not, not I'm, one that does, is at the same level as WebStorm, because I, I, actually this is what I worked uh, a couple of months on at Cloud9, is basic building a, a parser for JavaScript yeah, parser. With, with type inference, right? And that's a big job. Like, it took me a few months to do that. And then you get WebStorm level code completion. Okay. I, like, I have that code from Cloud9, but it's not mine, so I cannot use it. So I basically would have to do it again to, to build it into Z. Like, Z itself could do it. I just have to, I, I don't know, find the interest to do, redo my work, basically. <laughs> um, yeah, so the, yeah. Now WebStorm is pretty amazing in terms of code completion for basically all languages. So that doesn't match that, no. no. Until yeah. I, or somebody builds that. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you are working on, on, on that co code completion as a parse, JavaScript parser, yeah? In, the, in Cloud9, this was what I did more or less. Yeah, yeah. but you will be working in that, yeah? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I want to do it again. I don't know. Ah, okay. I was thinking of doing it in Python because it's a little bit easier for Python, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Who knows? Okay. No, no, it's not high on my to-do list, let's say. Okay, thank you. Oh, there's, uh, there's the, whole, the, the whole front I, end. Okay. I have three questions. <laughs> Uh, first, uh, when I'm using Z, uh, I can install uh, something, uh, Sublime plugins. Yeah, th those are the Z packages. It's, it's working. Yeah. It's yeah. cool. Uh, the second question, uh, at the moment, do you have something integration with uh, Gulp or Grant? Yeah, no. So actually, until version 1.1, 1 .1, you couldn't even run like a, an external program because of Chrome uh, limitations. You in Chrome apps cannot run arbitrary command line tools. Like in, for version Z 1.1, I finally added the ability to do that using some workaround. So now I can start to integrate stuff like PEP 8 tools, and theoretically you could also now run Grunt tools. Like there's no built-in support for it, but it would be fairly easy to add that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and last uh, question: mm, Do you thinking uh, about uh, something voice comment? To editor, voice comment, what, yeah. what, like natural language processing yeah. style? Exactly. <laughs> no, no, not really. Why? <laughs> like, it's it's my opinion. It's very good uh, feature. Uh, okay, so you you say gulp build 
and sure. run Gulp build. Uh, doesn't Chrome have stuff for that actually built in? Uh, it may actually be so easier than, you know. Uh, I, well, it's for I me, know, it's you can probably cool build it, like it's open source, you can add it, no problem. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, deal. Yeah. Thanks, man. Sure. Uh, one more question, I think, then we have a coffee break. Um, so, how fast is uh, how fast is that? Uh, did you tr run any comparison uh, between Z and, for example, Sublime, which is blazing fast? It, yeah, I think that's a technical term, right? Um, no, Z is f uh, sorry, Sublime is faster. Is, if that's what you wanted to know. Figured. Yeah, but that's impossible to beat, basically. Uh, I mean, for me, Z is fast enough. In terms of the only thing that sometimes it if you have a giant project with a lot of files and you're using the go-to UI, sometimes it, there's a slight lag in like filtering the list. But in terms of code editor, like yes, Sublime is like just amazing in speed. But actually, the Ace editor is also pretty. Like, it, it, I never see it as a problem, but it also is not as fast as Sublime because Sublime is. Okay, and did you try uh, Atom Atom.io from GitHub? Yes, yes, yes. And so that's another like another colleague of mine from Cloud9 is now working on an Atom. Um, so. I, I, I have tried it. Like it was like released later, way after I started Z already. So it was like I, I did question like should I still continue this? But I tried it. It's basically I see it as a Sublime clone, just done in HTML. It's not very different, um, but not yeah, not super interested in using it myself. And in terms of performance, because I heard that Atom is tremendously slow. Uh, well. Yeah, I don't know. Like well, I, I well, don't like people like, but yeah, this is coming from Z users. Z users say that Z is faster than Atom, but yeah, they are using Z. So what do you expect? Like, probably Atom users would say, yeah, yeah, Atom is much faster than Z. So it's not really a scientific uh, measure there. <laughs> right. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay. Uh, okay. One more question over there, and then coffee time. So actually, you've got lots of fan of many tools that are on the market. I'm a fan of uh, JetBrain tools. Mm -hmm. And um, what would be your <coughs> main arguments to to actually convince other uh, other people to use Z? Actually, all, all your your main argument, you know, to mm -hmm. to 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 make your society bigger? <laughs> uh, I think it's all about, like, you have kinds of people. You have IDE people, and you have, like, I, uh, I want to run VI in a terminal people. Uh, I mean, J all the JetRange products are ginormous Java applications that take a minute to boot, and that some people think that's a problem. VI is like super lightweight, like it has a learning curve that's like this, right? Uh, but once you get there, it is actually pretty cool. Z is kind of, in my opinion, in between. Like it's pretty lightweight. It's also not, like the learning curve is not that low. It really, I mean, I tried to f limit myself to not be a full IDE, so that's also why I didn't focus on grunt. Like whenever I see Piotr open like a project in in, in uh, WebStorm or something, it's like, oh, I detected this kind of build system. Would you like to use it? Like, whoa, that's really nice. That doesn't do that. Uh, if you need that, don't use it. But like, or yeah, I or just use command line tools. So like, some people just like everything in one place. Other people like to use the terminal for most of the things. They just need a good text editor. That is more the good text editor, right? Um, plus some fancy stuff. And another thing is that what I really like is some editors have like n a non-distraction mode. Like you go full screen and then like everything disappears. Like for, to me, that should be like default. So that's why Z like has nothing other than like the bare minimum, like a title bar and a file name. That's basically it. But like I try to keep everything as minimal as possible. If you like that, you should try it. If you don't. That's fine. It was just I just created it for myself, so it's no problem. No hard feelings. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's have coffee. 
and return in 15 minutes. <laughs>